What up, blood? Welcome back to the shop today. We're having another kick the cat on this Dan Gelbart uh, linear stage. If you haven't checked out uh, the, his prototyping videos from a few years ago, still very worthwhile. Uh, lots of pearls being dropped in there. As is my want, as witnessed by the dead soldiers, with no finesse at all. We are running on sheer force of will. I got a wee problem with their ripping the arse end out of our pantaloons here. Spectacularly on this section here. So what we're going to do, we'll just speed this up. We're going to go in and pocket all these areas would end up blasting out. Huh? Huh? I'm going to take a wee bit longer and then at the very end we'll come in and deck that off just with the quarter incher. And just spend the time taking tiny, tiny bites. Calculating. Please stand by. Uh oh. We cool, fam.
<laughs> I ain't no stranger to hard work. I, I, I enjoy it. I can watch it all day. But this Jesus thing, chewing out these little tabs by hand, a right pain in the cunning linguals. Good job for the apprentice. I haven't had one since the last Human Rights Tribunal. So fired up the iron golem. It, it's just like me at the buffet table. Shows up with, the, with a garbage can lid and locks the front hub augers right in. It, it loves that kind of busy work. Unfortunately for me, you got to be smarter than the machine you program it. I mirrored it and I cut out, I was gonna cut all these tabs on the machine and I cut out the wrong way. So I, I spoiled the work and uh, ain't nothing for it but to throw it in the fuck it bucket and, and try again. Homework in the summer. Well, this thing chooches, we're gonna jam some polyvinyl. Uh, look down in the doobly-doo in the preview. Yeah, uh, guys suggesting other things. Molten lead. Eh, eh. And we're just going to jam the, uh, the hot snot in there. And that will hopefully mitigate some of the vibrations during machining of that thin wall section. Well, it's still sort of mildly warm. I'm going to get rid of the lion's share of the schmoo. Oh, ho, ho, fuck yeah! She worked like a hot damn. Thank you very much, Gerard and all the guys. What uh, commented hot glue. Of course, on a bigger thing, you might end up using the, the foam still, but for smaller stuff, much more rigid. We're gonna use a nice fine pitch 1032 thread uh, screw on there. And uh, recently invested in, you know, you go and grab, try and grab the right tap and the right drill and you never got the Jesus thing. Uh, you can see these don't get used for anything but thread and holes. The machine is creed. Say it with me now. First we break the chip. Then we break the tap. Then we walk away. Machinist ballistic gel. <laughs> Good penetration on that load. Uh, just a little hand finish. Twist at the top. I haven't actually got any alcohol, as <laughs> surprising as that is, any rubbing alcohol. We got methyl hydrate, which is methyl alcohol. I have a sneaking suspicion that any kind of alcohol will work. What we're trying to do is just get this glue to de-chooch a little bit. Framing, you fuck! <laughs> She's been in there but a couple minutes and already starting to de-chooch. It's all fun and games till. Somebody gets a surprise, Prince Albert, with a O-ring pick. Yeah, well, not quite there yet. I'm glad we're finally seeing some progress. Starting to get uh, altogether too comfortable in the belly of that whale. Like maybe venturing out into the unknown. That's not all it's cracked up to be. And here we go, small victories, small victories. The development of this was non-trivial. I, uh, it was, it was difficult. I, you know, there's about, oh, 1100% scrap rate on this. <laughs> Not easy, but now that we've got it, she's a piece of piss and the beauty of these flexures is they're very rigid in two planes and very, very easily flexed in the other plane. Look at this. In the Z, stiff as a wedding prick. In the Y, stiffer. But in the X, easy to move. Okay, so what does that mean for us? What the fuck are you going to do with this thing? Well... What we're going to do with it is we are going to measure tiny things what we don't want to touch. Insert do claw dick joke here. We got the eyelid glue on here and we're just going to put a little ball right in the middle of this 1032 screw. Now poke the head of her in. Just the tip, mines. What we're going to be able to do, this is 1032, that means 32 threads per inch. So one 
over 32. 1 divided by 32 is going to give us something like uh, 0.013 thou. But this mechanism is a linkage that's 25 to 1. So divide that 13 thou by 25. What's that give us? It gives us half a blonde one. What we're going to be able to do with this thing is measure tiny, tiny things optically. We got our half ass set up and I pulled out the old electronic slide rule. I know, it's slipping, getting, getting lazy. I don't ever catch old. <laughs> so that's how much uh, it advances, the screw advances for every turn. But you divide that by 25 because that mechanism in here is a 25 to 1 lever. And that means that each full turn of this screw is 0.00125 of an inch, which uh, times 25.4 is that many metrics. Now we're going to get this uh, craptacular, rather Chineseium. I mean, it's fantastic for what you pay for it, but it's pretty crappy otherwise. USB microscope, and we'll make a fiducial with the sharp A on here. And yes, we have gone back to the future. Now, okay, move that back. We're there. Make a little mark on my screw. Now we're going to turn this. This is a circuit board trace off the uh, rulers. <laughs> Drums. Drums in the deep. One. Two. Three. And we're stroked out. So the maximum distance we're going to be able to measure with this is a blonde one, precisely. I'm going to back her off here. Check the angle of the dangle, the glide of the slide. One half. One. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Three. Three and a half. Three and one half. Point ought ought one two five times three point five is equivalent to four point three thou. Four point three seven five thou. That's how wide that trace is roughly. I'm gonna measure a human hair, my human hair. One half turn. One turn. One and a half turns. I'm quite chuffed at that. Mind you, I am slightly biased seeing as how this is my baby. How do you measure things you can't touch, tiny things you can't touch, without all kinds of scientific instruments? Well, just with a craptacular USB microscope and a flexure plate. You know, some things keep me up at night, like is my 300 count Egyptian linen actually 300 count? One of the things that Dan Gelbart did in his demo was he put his hand over top and you could watch the thing grow. Now he had a, a special instrument to do that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some methyl hydrate on here and that should cool it down and then we'll watch to see if indeed you can see it shrink. Glug, glug, glug. Now the more I play with this, the more I, I, I like it. It sounds like, well, every 13 year old boy in history, but I gotta make one of these <laughs> Uh, for myself so that we can mess with it. The beautiful thing about these flexures is there's no slop because there's no pins. There might be a little bit of hysteresis there, but, and there's also no wear, no wear. If it's properly designed, nothing wears out. So 
there's that. And just trying to make a mechanism. What is rigid, super rigid in two planes and super flexible in, in another, in just the single plane, that is not, and that, that is a non trivial task to be sure. So, thanks for joining me on this little adventure. And uh, yeah, it goes to show that with uh, patience and machine tools, without a water jet cutter, you can make these. I would say easily, but you can make these, and probably once you get the hang of her. Um, you'll be able to whip these out uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. So if you have any ideas for different flex gears, like this one has but 5 thou a stroke, essentially. So, you know, it has, it has pretty damn small things you can measure with this. So thanks for watching. Give your dick an advice.